Here we are in Antwerp, Belgium, and for the live, live streaming. I'm Ahmed Elliman with the Beer Idiots, and I've got with me Farah Weinhoven, who says he wishes his name was Beerhoven. Yeah, indeed. And he uh, operates Beer Geeks in Arnhem. Uh, yeah, from Arnhem, but the Beer Geeks is an online Facebook group. Yes, it's yep. global. I mean, you're very famous in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, well, uh, when it comes to beer, I guess, yes. <laughs> That's and, uh, true. Uh, and what do you do? At, uh, you know, what's your, your primary platform is Facebook? Yeah, yeah. So uh, our primary platform is Facebook. So I have this Facebook, pa uh, Facebook page, which is called Beer Geeks. It has now over 16,000 members in the group, uh, mainly Dutch. We shall hide our heads in shame at Beer Idiots. You're a member of Beer Geeks, or not? Uh, no, yes, I'm signed up, yes. Yeah, very good, very good. So, no, we have uh, over 16,000 members now, uh, mainly Dutch, some Belgian, a uh, little international maybe. And what we do is we try to uh, express our love for beer, and especially craft beer, um, by showing what we drink, by uh, sharing beer news, but also um, doing live meetings with each other. So we meet each other at beer festivals, like today, you know, it's yeah. the Billy's Craft Beer Festival. This is the kickoff here's of the, the Billy's. Billy's. Yep, here's the... Cheers. Cheers to a great Billy Scrub Beer here's Festival. To me. Cheers. <laughs> and Dieter over there, the Dieter, other beer idiot. The other beer idiot is behind the camera. Cheers, man. So this is the kickoff of the uh, Billy Scrub Beer Festival. And this is also a place where we, as a beer geeks, we meet. So today I have two beer geeks with me. Uh, Shors Gerritsen behind the camera. Bart Lentjes. Yeah, yes. So that's what we do. We meet each other at beer festivals. We talk, we talk beer, we discuss beer. Um, we discuss new items in beer, everything beer related, that's what we do. So basically you're a bunch of beer bores. Yes, indeed, <laughs> that's what we are. <laughs> and I should not be hesitant to say, in Antwerp, we're at one of your favorite places and my favorite places to meet in for Antwerp. Sure. Uh, beer beer Lovers Lover's bar. bar. And thanks to Ben sitting over there for uh, hosting Thank us. You. It's a great bar. If you're in Antwerp, make sure to come by. This is yeah. one of the best bars in Antwerp. And actually, sure. if you're smart, it's close to the station, so yep. 500 meters, I counted it. And yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the first and last stop before you head home. And, you yep. know, you've got so many places uh, close by that... Indeed, and we're drinking this great beer now, which is uh, from the wedding of Ben, right? It's a beer from the brewery La Source in Brussels. A great pill ale with Strata Mosaic hops. So yeah, incredible beer. Yes. So make La sure Source, to get that one. Yeah, that, he's got a few kegs here and some cans. Yeah. But we'll talk to Ben later. I'm really awesome. interested in, uh, so it's basically almost a club, but you also publish things and do other uh, causes. Yeah, yeah right? we do a lot of stuff. We're not the normal uh, Facebook group, I would say. We're, tr we're a very active Facebook group, so we try to interact with um, the members itself, but we're also doing uh, stuff like, uh, for instance, we have a nice initiative which is called the Beer Swap. Mm -hmm. uh, I can explain mm. shortly what the Beer Swap is. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I see your Before. Face. Yeah. So the Beer Swap means that um, you can sign up for the Beer Swap. It means you buy six beers which you think are amazing yeah. for someone else you are paired with. So we you enter the beer swap by saying I want to join and uh, your name goes into a big hat and you are uh, coupled to a different person who also signs up you're not one-on-one -on -one, but it's just random so you get a name and you get a description of what that person likes then you go out and you buy six beers which you think are amazing and that the other person should really try put it in a box put everything beer related you can find into it so like stickers or merchandise put some festive stuff in there, tie it, seal it, um, package it, and uh, we have a fixed date where we say, okay, the Saturday, the 26th of November, at 12 o'clock, we all unpack. So we have about 400 to 500 people joining this, uh, this event. Oh my God, 400 and, uh, presents. 400 presents, so you have 400 persons going out, buying at least six beers for the other person, so uh, wrapping it with all kinds of gifts and extras. And at a certain moment, we say, okay, now is the time to unpack. And then you see on this Facebook page, on the Beer Geeks page, you see like 400 to 500 pictures of people really excited, like Christmas morning unwrapping Or disappointed. Their or disappointed. <laughs> that is true. We're, out of those 400, like one or two people get disappointed. Always. That's always the case. 
but uh, that's uh, <laughs> I'm told to hide my balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good idea, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is a great initiative we do, uh, for instance. Uh, so we have 400 to 500 people unwrapping their box at the same time, posting So it's pictures. the secret Santa principle transferred to yeah. beer. Transferred to beer. That's one of the initiatives we do. We also do a yearly uh, charity uh, fundraiser where we try to raise money for the ALS Foundation. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, one of our members uh, back in uh, 2014, um, he joined us in 2014. He was diagnosed with the disease ALS, the oh, right, muscular yes. disease, which yeah. is horrible. Uh, yeah. In 2015, he decided it was, it was done for him. Mm -hmm. So um, that made a huge impact on the group. So we decided when the Beer Geeks uh, community exists for five years, we decided we needed to do something. And we brewed a beer together with 57 Dutch breweries that year. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we decided to um, raise money for the ALS Foundation. And we raised that year, we raised 44,000 euros with the selling of this beer, but wow. also people getting into action, you know, uh, trying to sell their stuff to raise money for this foundation. So it raised awareness, it wasn't just the money, yeah, it was yeah. uh, well, it's, it's it's disease that... Uh, yeah, w raise awareness is. when it comes to the ALS, muscular disease. Jesus. Also, there's a lot of money needed for the research. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's what we try to help. So we try to raise money for the research against the ALS uh, muscular disease. This is what we do, this is a yearly thing. Um, first year we brewed a beer with 57 Dutch breweries. Beer was called Body and Soul. It was an imperial stout with coffee. Nice. The year after yeah. that, we brewed a beer with 81 Dutch breweries together at the Jopa Brewery. Uh, the beer was called Road to Nowhere. It was mm -hmm. uh, really also a nice dark beer. Uh, the year afterwards, we brewed six different beers with six different uh, breweries, each brewery hosting 10 other breweries. So it was like 60 joining breweries. And in this way, we try to make a difference in our community. You know, it's not only posting a picture of the beer you are drinking and mm -hmm. of course that's also great and amazing and try to spread the love of the craft beer but also doing stuff a little bit differently like the with the beer swap or with the ALS charity foundation so try to do it a little bit different and can you tell us a bit uh, you know we've been following from here the uh, of course the the Dutch uh, beer craft beer scene you know some of our favorites are of course the well-known de Masuto uh, Yep. And others that come out frontal or the usual, and then the whole Antwerp scene. And where do you come from? When did you start noticing or getting into the beer scene, and for oh, yeah. what reason? <coughs> yeah, it was about 10 years ago, I think. We're now at 2022, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. so about 2012. I think I started to notice that there are other beers than Pilsners, started to uh, explore the beer scene. Uh, in Arnhem, where I come from, first of all, um, take all the beers from the supermarket I didn't know. So those were the Belgian known ones like uh, Leffe and West Malle. I just tried that one. And then more and more I discovered new flavors and I wanted to dive deeper into beer. So first of all, I just did that with my wife and on Facebook I just posted on my own timeline. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I now discovered a new beer and I now discovered a small craft beer. And then I just posted it on my normal timeline which I thought was okay, and I thought everybody wanted to join me in this journey. <laughs> and then I got a phone call from my mother saying, well, you've been busy with a lot of beers lately. And I said, yeah, yeah, I am. I said, yeah, that's Sounds that's like great. a call from my mom yeah, in yeah, Toronto. I said, I said, that's great. And my mom said, yeah, that's really great. But your aunts, they, they uh, unfriended you on Facebook because they only saw beer on their timeline. That's when I thought, well, okay, this should not be the case. And then uh -huh. I just started this group where I just thought, okay, I can just invite a couple of my friends and uh, talk about beer and see what other people are drinking. So that's how I actually started this whole Beer Geeks Facebook group oh, right. with, with, with a handful of friends, like 20 friends. But then in the end, they invited 20 friends and they invited 20 friends, etc. And it spiraled, yeah. Yeah, and it spiraled. Yeah, but that's how I, I started, just finding out new flavors. And I, I did a beer tasting in 2012 something where I also discovered American craft beers. So I can still remember we had a beer from uh, Flying Dog, yeah. which for me was really new and it was IPA. Yeah. And back in 2012, IPAs were not a thing in the Netherlands. And I had that beer and it was like, wow. I remember this, drinking this one still, of their favorite. I yeah, remember it was Raging they Bitch, which I drank back then. Yeah, because it was a tribute. I've still got that bottle on my wall. It's a tribute to Hunter S. Thompson. Is that the yeah, one? Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. Indeed, indeed. That's the fist. Yep. And the, yeah, I've indeed. got that bottle. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm an ex-journalist, so you know he was one of my. Uh, oh, nice! Yeah, 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 yeah. Your colleagues. <laughs> yeah, they were raising money to put this statue to blow up the statue in where he lived. Uh, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like them. Yeah. Yeah, his so, ashes would be blown up too. There were. Yeah, oh, wow. and it was done. Sean nice. Penn sponsored. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, weird yeah. that you connect through that beer. Yeah. Well, well, I, I have the bottle at home. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. You see how great beer is. People really <laughs> together like yeah, this, right? Well, yeah. For me, that was a, a moment that I said, "Wow." This is still beer, you know. Yeah. It was this? It was Raging Bitch. It was Belgian IPA. But back then there were no IPAs in the Netherlands, so I was blown away by it. I so wanted, really, I wanted really to find out more. So really, the Dutch beer scene, the craft scene, had not really started, by No. Um, well, I think time? around 2012, 2013, then the real Dutch beer scene exploded, and uh -huh. a lot of the Dutch craft breweries are now 10 years old, 12 years old. Uh -huh. So back then it really started. And it's also the moment that I started, and I started with my Facebook group, finding, finding out new flavors. So you were one of the first, along with the pioneers, so you were able to, yeah, do you I, have the resources to explore at that time? Because you know, some of us have jobs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> me too, me too, me too. <laughs> I, I have a regular day job, I have a regular day job, where, <laughs> which is uh, most of my time. Yeah, but I, I went out every weekend trying to find new beers, and all my spare time went into beers. It still is, actually. And an understanding partner is key. Understanding partner is key, and my wife is amazing, and she is uh, well helping me a lot, especially back then by drinking together with me and yeah. finding out new beers, new flavors. So yeah, it was a journey we did together. So, and that was great. It was really new, and also for the breweries back then, the Dutch breweries, they also started started to brew IPA for the first time, exploring what they could brew, and well. I have a feeling like we grew up together, you know, we, me with my Facebook group, all these Dutch brewers. We're now yeah, 10 years, that's what I was 10 years just later. Noticing, yeah. Yeah. So you grew up, we were one of the pioneers, and I guess they were seeing that there was this interest. Because yep. that's what sustains them, you know. Many starts local in their garage, you know, the usual Indeed. trip out. And suddenly they discover an audience and people start talking about them, like yep. your group and other people going, well, how do I... You know, I've heard about this craft scene. How do I trust these? Because at that time, also, there was commercial, some commercial interest in it. Yep. You know, not just the guys who yeah. were interested in doing something different. Was the Netherlands really a beer desert, or did it have a tradition that craft mm. brewers, like hair craft brewers, yes, they don't call them the tradition, but they have a no, rail no. wealth of knowledge and background, yeah. you know. Well, now I would say the universities. Netherlands, yeah, the studied. Netherlands is a real beer desert. So, late '80s, I think there were 13 breweries left in the Netherlands, only producing pilsners. Right. So the macro breweries, that was it. So, and then of course you had the um, the smaller breweries coming up, like uh, Brouwerij Ein Amsterdam was uh -huh. one of the first who came up. I think Maximus in Utrecht. Um, of the lekkere. Yeah, because uh, they now have a big Yeah, so those, those, those were the first ones to, to pop up and do something else, do something else besides Pilsner. But then back in 2010, 2012, 2013, that's when the real craft beer started to happen, you know, the IPAs and the big bold stouts, and that's when that really became a popular thing. And, and so we were kind of new back then everyone was new at the scene you know new at this beer geek scene and with the ipa styles or the berliner weisse styles trying to figure out how it works how you can brew it how you can what you can taste what you can try to find in there that's all really relatively new to the netherlands of course we have a lot of belgian and german beers that's what i was going to talk since you're yep. so close to the german border yeah there of course, this. yeah, yeah. We, we, well, we were mainly a desert of Pilsner, but there were some Belgian triples, blonde beers, some German Weizen beers. That's basically it. Um, of course, great beers. Yes. But, but still, that was basically it. And IPA, etc. That that all came in 2010, 2012. Because when I think, and maybe it's my uh, bias of the Dutch beer scene, you know, I love. We've interviewed the Masutel guys, the tr three brothers, yep. at least three times. The Zoomerdijk you know, yeah, uh, yeah. brothers. Yeah. Uh, his stouts and s such great, heavy, dark beers. Heavy, in the thick night. stouts. Uh, that's, yep. that's when I think of the Netherlands right now. A real specialty, I think. Yeah, I can think I say, would it be too bold to say there's a real specialty brewing there? 
Um, well, yes and no. Uh -huh. Of course, we, we now have more or less a thousand breweries in the Netherlands. Wow. Craft uh, brewers or just brewers in total? No, bre brewers in total. So yeah. these are also the gypsy brewers, the yeah. what we call the laptop brewers, yeah. but on, also the craft brewers with their own kettles, uh, but also the bigger brewers. So around a thousand. And everybody has kind of their own unique style, you know, like yeah. the Moorschleutel has these big thou thick yeah. stouts, for instance. <laughs> But but um, um, there are also breweries still producing blondes and triples, which is well, also amazing. You have to need it. Yeah, yeah that's also it. great. So I think everybody has their own signature, and I don't know if we're a country which has really one specialty okay. or one. I would say it's quite diverse, okay. and also we're copying, I think, other countries. What we see, like in the United States, for instance, we first of all copied, of course, Belgium with the blondes and the triples, yeah. Germany with the whites and. Um, and then, of course, the United States came with the IPAs, the yeah. big bold stout. So we tried then to the New Englands and the hazies. Exactly. The so we're taking a bit from everywhere and kind of making it our own thing. But that's how own. a beer tradition started. Right? Yeah. So you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, for sure. And is the market big now? Would you say? I know that may be something that. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's starting to get bigger. Um, so, for instance, if you walk into a supermarket at this moment in the Netherlands, uh, you can see a whole wall full of beer, uh, and a big part of that is craft beer. Okay. So, beers from Jope or the Moorschleutel, but also like To Ul or um, uh, other international breweries. So, I would say more and more people are getting into craft beer or into beer. So, I think the market is still there but also still the amount of breweries is growing. So I think we have to see what's going to happen because there's a lot of beer being produced out there and we need to drink it all because <laughs> <laughs> we need to sustain the, all these breweries. But yeah, I would say there is a big market for beer in the Netherlands, also for craft beer. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens in a few years time because there are new breweries coming up. Breweries, existing breweries are releasing beers constantly. Yeah. So well, it's going fast. Uh 1,000 is an impressive number. Yep, for sure. And for yourself, uh, growing up with this explosion, and one could say since the, since the 2012, you're saying, 2013, yep. uh, how did you uh, learn to write about it? And, or was it, was it just beer reviews that's your sustain, or do you kind of well, publish or well, I'm not really interview publish. people? Or yeah, well, we also do that. Well, we have a, a YouTube, uh, well, actually live stream, yes. what we used to do, uh, which is called Big Geeks Television. Yeah. It was way before COVID, and then uh, me and some friends, we went out to a uh, um, craft beer brewery and did a live stream in our Big Geeks Facebook group. We got a tour through a brewery, we got to talk to the brewers, got to drink their beers, and on forehand we said which beers we're going to drink, yeah. and then people could buy those and drink together with us, ask questions immediately, ah, okay. and then the, the, brewer, yes, yes. the brewer could just immediately uh, uh, yeah, give feedback. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we did this for years, and then COVID came along and we had yeah. to stop because we could not visit any breweries anymore, but then the breweries started to do that themselves. Yeah. <laughs> So that was really nice. But um, I'm not per se kind of a writer. I'm not writing uh, articles. I'm just curating kind curating of. and re reviewing the beers I drink, uh, try to keep the group going in a nice way that we can all enjoy it. We can and all that's 16, what 000. I was going to ask you, actually. That's a tough, because I've seen some <laughs> of these groups go out of control. Wrong yep. post, you're in a wrong group, and people yes. get really pissed off over yeah, slight things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, especially now past uh, COVID times, it seems that people are more edgy or more hostile than before. Or willing to express, instead of being polite, I think, you know, yeah. it's the whole thing that... Yeah, it's, it's okay to be nasty. Yeah, it, it's sometimes it's really difficult. And of yeah. course, we're a group of 16 and a half thousand members. Wow. So we're not going to do it right by everyone. No. And, and that's not the aim. It's not. But we're trying to do it right for the most of the people. And we're trying yeah. to create a community where everyone feels welcome and everybody that's is happy. That's the way it should happy, be. That's where I beer. You know, that's what attracted me to the beer world. I used to review wines in France and Spain. And I said, let me get out of that foie gras eating crowd. No, I love wines. <laughs> <laughs> I said, let me go back to, you know, because it was just so much friendlier. People really share. They're really excited to share yep. uh, experiences and have a glass of this pre-COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or nowadays, we just carry around two or three glasses. You could all have a taste of 
Yeah. You know, that's how we're going to talk about Billy's in a second. Uh, but uh, yeah. No, but for sure, in, in the Beer Geeks Facebook group, it's not always going smoothly, uh, yeah. of course, with so many members. But we try it, and that's, that's mainly my job, and that's where I'm most of the time busy with within my group, to try to let it go smooth. And I'm not doing that by myself. No. I have, we have four administrators in or total. Or else it'd be up 24 hours yeah, a day. Yeah, right? I used to do that. I, used, <laughs> I was by myself, and I, I was constantly checking my phone and at one point I had a phone here, a tablet here and my laptop here <laughs> and trying to figure out which person is saying what to whom and and it was not doable anymore so I decided we need more people, more administrators. So we're now with four people trying to get the group and going. And you take over it. And so for example, how do you, do you have to be diplomatic? And you know, the ultimate yeah. thing is kick somebody out which you don't want to do. Nah, that, that's well, that has been done, but then, then you really have to cross some really serious lines before we kick someone out. Yeah. Um, then but how do you moderate some of these? Uh, some of the arguments are over beers or whether they should be on here. Or yeah, well, arguments over beers are always good okay. and that's fine. But when it starts, um, when it's about sports, for instance, oh, and that's that's where the discussions come. Of when it's about the like stuff like hashtag Me Too, for instance, uh -huh. that's where the real discussion ah, starts. political stuff. Political yes. stuff. So that's that's the most difficult because you have to be diplomatic and still respect everyone's opinion. Yes. But we're not a um, discussion group about yeah. political stuff. We're yeah. a beer group, so we try to focus on the beer. So sometimes we have to at least slow down the, the conversation. Luckily, Facebook has a uh, button for that, so we can slow down the conversation. Oh, only yeah? To, yeah, to one comment per five minutes. Oh, all right. <laughs> that, that's sometimes... So you don't get you into a flame war. Well, exactly, that because people are really quick with reacting yeah. and, and responding. They don't think about it, no. yeah. So we, we can, but we don't do that often, but we can hit that button and then you just can only have one comment per five minutes. So these are tools we can use. But we're not a political no, debate and group. And you don't want to be the group. police. Yeah. No, I, well, sometimes I feel like that. But <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not well, my, favorite, it's not my <laughs> favorite thing. Uh, but no. You don't want to be wagging your finger no. like the Pope, <laughs> Pontiff, you know, <laughs> anatoma, anatoma. No, for sure. But uh, we do what we can. But of course, not everybody always agrees, but yeah. That's and you talk is. about me too. Uh, what's the gender balance? Is there a lot of uh, well, because that's the difficulty when you start. It's usually guys and women. May for not sure. Feel also, and also in big geeks, it's it's yeah. you know. Yeah, also in big geeks, it's the it's the normal gender role what we see in beer. Unfortunately, because I would yeah. love to have more women in beer, but I think it's like eighty percent male, twenty percent female. So that's that's also in the big geeks Facebook group more or less, or maybe oh, well, seventy five, twenty five. But well, that's. At least it's a start, you know. At yeah, least it's a start, but um, I'm hoping more and more people will see that you can enjoy beer. Not only the guys, you and know, that we get place. away. Yeah, we, I hope we get away from the beers for guys. Thing, yes, you know? yeah, it's, yeah. It's total a bullshit. Bunch of birds. Yeah, total bullshit. Beers <laughs> for everyone. Beers just awesome drink. And, yeah, and yeah. It's not and only for the guys. It's and for to share everyone. your experience. That's also part of the fun, right? Yeah, it's not indeed. just I'm sitting at home uh, sipping my. Ah, ah. <laughs> no, you're sharing an experience, and part of that experience always is like us having a conversation and remembering with a good beer, with yep. a good beer and uh, amazing places. You know. Yep. How about the festival scene in? Uh, the Netherlands is it yep. grown as well were there festivals but, yeah, before really, because I yep. mean we know the goat festival in Antwerp uh, sorry Amsterdam that we really would like to go at some point yeah well the fest the craft beer festival scene has exploded as well yeah I think now we have every weekend you can visit a craft beer festival some smaller some larger but the scene exploded there's so much to do um, and I try to be present at a lot of them, yes. <laughs> but um, of course I have to also be home at some point. But no, we have a lot of festivals and a lot of festivals who are inviting international breweries, like for instance, Billy's does. Well, yes. Billy's is an exception because they have 57 breweries. Yeah, 57, 57 breweries. 57 breweries yeah. attending. Well, that's amazing. But um, And not just the brewers, but the, bre uh, sorry, the breweries, it's the brewers, as yeah, you're saying. Yeah, exactly. That's what I really like also about yeah. Billy's, that the brewer is behind the bar and yeah. you can talk to the brewer. That's really great. But in the Netherlands, we more or less have the same, uh, where we have bigger festivals, smaller festivals, 
bigger festivals invite international breweries with also sometimes the brewer themselves present. So yeah, it's a great time to be a beer geek. <laughs> so if you were to uh, recommend one or two to our Belgian audience here to go beer to... Beer festivals. Yeah, in the Netherlands. I would for sure say Hop in het Slot. Mm -hmm. Hop in het Slot is a great beer festival which is hosted in an orchard of a castle. Where is it? Um, it's near Nijmegen. Okay. So it's uh, uh, the eastern part of the Netherlands, so to close to the German border. It's a small village which has a castle, and the castle has a nice fruit orchard. And in the fruit orchard, there's this beer festival. International breweries present, brewers present. That's a great one. Uh, another great one is uh, Bier and Bich, which is always, always fun. Yes. Hosted by our good friend Casper uh, Pennings. He's a craft beer nerd in okay. every sense. He's he's breathing a living craft beer. So, um, well, follow him. Um, beer yeah, and Big, cool. also yeah. amazing lineup. Van Mol Fest is a great one, uh, hosted by our friends of Van Mol Brewery and the Brew Pub, which also is uh, uh, in Eindhoven. Uh, great city also for beer. And of course, the Borefs Beer Festival by the Mola. That, See, that he's one. not stopping now. <laughs> no, I can I can go on for hours, man. So a lot of great. <laughs> of Have you been there, Dieter? We're going to bring Dieter on in a few. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're going to be we're the beer idiots. are going to do a beer idiots road trip. Uh, awesome. A couple festivals if they're close together. Let me know. I want to join. Across. Let me yeah, know. Let's it's do awesome. It. We're just yep. right along in the car. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have great festivals, and I can list goes on for hours. Well, I know we're going to, I think one of the things we have to do, Dieter, is start at least putting some of the stuff in the Netherlands on our calendar, because we do now and then to the border towns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And also with France. Um, so where do you take this beer geeks to? Or do you, are you comfortable where it is, staying as a forum? Or do you see yourself well, as a career yeah, in that's, beer? Well, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, for now, it's great what it is, and mm -hmm. it has brought me so much, and I'm really grateful for that. But of course, it's a Facebook platform, mm -hmm. and at one point or the other, Facebook is going to stop, or people are going to leave Facebook. That's what you already see now. So this is always in the back of my mind, like, what am I going to do when this all ends? Mm -hmm. To be honest, I have no clue. I have no backup plan. Here's the no clue. Uh, yes, <laughs> it, I have no backup plan. This is just, I'm, I'm enjoying the ride and, and we'll just see where it ends. It's, uh, and I'm, I'm now met so many great people because yeah. of this Beer Geeks Facebook yes, group. Yes, isn't like it amazing? Today, you know, I would not not have sit here. Uh, yeah, yeah, it wasn't well, for beer, uh, beer so, reaching out. Yeah, yeah. so I no, I have no clue what to do uh, after this. Just see how long the ride will go and uh, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Very good, and perhaps we can now introduce uh, yes, Bart my, very, my very good friend Miser. Bart Lentjes. Shall I s give him the microphone and uh, get uh, behind the camera? If you take a break, if you yeah, want. Yeah, of course. And come maybe on, we'll uh, ask Dieter to, uh, do you want to, come on Dieter, your turn, you got to practice. Ah, uh, Dieter. Bart, I give you the microphone. Yes. yes. And I'm going to give you this, Dieter. And then Dieter's we're going to talk. Dieter's going to practice. We're going to end. And it makes two of us. We haven't oh. talked about uh, billies yet, but we'll do a little... You can do the billies. Yeah, we can do the billies. Uh, all right. Hello, Dieter. Hello. Cheers. Yes, first of, of course. Of all, first of all. Thanks. Welcome, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're sitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah tell me a bit. Um, what's your concept about? Well, my concept is... Well, actually, I'm, I, I call myself Meester in Bieren, which yeah. means something like teacher in beers. Yeah. And my concept is that I'm a teacher at an uh, elementary school and uh, I have a passion for craft beer. So that's my concept. And uh, uh, in the world of craft beer, I, I tend to, to uh, have a lot of adventures and, and, and uh, visit the breweries and make some uh, uh, movies or something about that. And so you do more the cinematographic? Well, no, part, it's, it's a little part of it, actually. I like to review my beers or some beers on uh, mm -hmm. on Instagram or Facebook, and oh, oh. keep telling, yeah, keep oh telling. keep telling. Oh well, maybe I'm not sure. No, no, that, that's okay. Uh, it's everything is okay. Well, everything is still running, Amit. <laughs> so Dieter needs to practice, but uh, Ahmed also needs to practice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the master in beer, you. Um, 
Well, I, I, talk I, I, about the beers then. Eh? Yeah, the talk about beers and, yeah. and how I uh, uh, well uh, enjoy them or, mm -hmm. or don't, don't enjoy them. Uh, and um, uh, I visit breweries, so I make a little uh, like make movies about that. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a part. And uh, I'm also an illustrator, so I I have done a few uh, uh, beer labels in the past, and uh, really enjoy that. So busy with all kind of things. And and when you say you make movies in breweries, is that like you you pick a brewery, you visit it, and you make a video and you release it on social media, or it's more yeah 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 the yeah. breweries demand like we want more a corporate movie or no, but it's it's just casual. I have mm -hmm. my I it's just with my 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 mobile or my cell phone or how you call ah, it, yeah, yeah, and uh, I make some uh, 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 um, shots. Uh, yeah. and, 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 uh, and so I showed uh, the brewery uh, uh, this year I went to, uh, that was pretty special, uh, the Garden Brewery in uh, Zagreb. Oh, yeah. So it was a huge uh, brewery and, uh, and nice to see, to walk around with Mario, which is a great dude. I hope to see him uh, today at, at Billy's. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, well, walking, well, the two of us, not hand in hand, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 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 well, seeing everything where you where you yeah. where, where um, normally you won't go and uh, after that I, I done a few other ones and, uh, and I filmed yeah. festivals but just a little bit and, and you started it as a, you're not a teacher in um, video editing or so I assume no. you it's really as a hobby you started it's like that that's it we started beer idiots also like that with a first very big gimbal with a phone and then we yeah. we noticed like yeah we we need a lavalier mic, and then oh, but light is also important. And then we gradually upgraded our set. Yeah, yeah, and I can see that. Now we have lights, a streaming computer, and all that. Lights, uh, camera, how action. Did, how did how did you start it with with your tech gear? Like first you started on your mobile phone, and then lights. I keep it that way. Yeah, uh, actually, I degraded a little bit. So mm. at first I was busy with the camera and all the kind of shit, yeah. and uh, beep, and uh, and now I'm on my mobile because I always have that one around. Yeah. And doesn't need to be that flashy or great mm -hmm. or uh, uh, but put a little music uh, under it and uh, does a lot eh? it does sound, a lot sound and, uh, yeah. and put yeah. it on YouTube uh, or my other socials and then uh, yeah. see and, and what happens how do you work together with uh, with beer gigs the platform you're a member of them and uh, well I'm a member since uh, 2019 mm -hmm. and then I saw this this bearded man with with always wearing a cap uh, and uh, I thought, well, I I, uh, I recognize uh, that guy, uh, and it was uh, Ferry, and he his his children are uh, on the school I work, uh, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's a small world small after world. all. Uh. Yeah, and you, you do mainly then breweries in Europe, the Netherlands. Uh. Well, mainly the the Netherlands, and uh, the Garden Brewery, of course, was uh, pretty special. Uh. But I hope to visit uh, yeah. other breweries in other countries, but that's that should be on my holidays. And and. Language-wise, it's Dutch or English? It's Dutch. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did a, a very funny video a couple of years just before COVID with uh, Jan Kemke from Kemke Culture. Yeah. He invited us, and then a bit like you do, like didn't know that much what to expect. Looked him yeah. up a little bit, and I'm like, "Whoa, this is amazing stuff!" Yeah. And then you're sitting there for two days, and then yeah, one day intensively filming everything and then like all right we have to do post-production we have to make something out of this we have to do yeah. music montage it yeah and, uh, a lot of work goes into that yeah post-production yeah. is always always so much work i had know? a i had a great visit it's at uh, the lekkere it, which uh, is a brewery in uh, in utrecht and uh, the, the well the biggest <coughs> craft uh, brewery over there it was about three months ago still have to finish that movie because oh. ah, but it's timeless, so other things are more like uh, a festival right now or something that's yeah. uh, that needs to be released. Yeah. It goes first. That's like w when we record our movies, like interviews with brewers, and so we yeah. try to do it as timeless as possible. Yeah. So because I mean, knows that sometimes I find some movies on my hard drive, like oh yeah, still need to do that <laughs> one of last year, <laughs> and then yeah. it's and then it's like, but because it's so timeless and you don't do timestamps or events in yeah. your videos then it's not that sensitive yeah 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 um, it, can can it can wait the, uh, them yeah and there there is another star coming Sit I, on just my lap. Oh, no. <laughs> I just married men 
Okay. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Dieter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Ben. Hey, hello, Dieter. How does it feel to be married? It feels amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I found the wife of my life. And, yeah, we just did it two weeks ago to give each other the ring. And it feels amazing. So, yeah. Uh, Great, great. It was also an amazing day, so it couldn't be better. One of the best days of my life. So. And practically, where in Antwerp? Was in, uh, was in Ghent. Clo yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. you now moved from Antwerp and you live now. Yeah, in officially I live in Ghent. Yeah. I still have my apartment here in Antwerp. So when I'm working in the bar, afterwards I stay in Antwerp. Other days, yeah. I stay in Ghent. So there needs to be a good balance and. For the record, thank you for hosting us this early. Oh, no problem. I called yeah. you two days before, like, hey, we need <laughs> yeah. a location. Yeah, and these <laughs> days it's pretty busy with the Billy's Fest uh, is coming yeah. up in a few hours. And yesterday we had like an amazing tap takeover with the guys from Dea. Mm -hmm. And it was also uh, crazy busy, super nice atmosphere. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah tell me a bit what you expect of this edition of, uh, of Billy's. Oh, no I, uh, well, uh, of course, new brewers, also known brewers who uh, made some nice specials. I heard uh, Stefan ask to more than 50 brewers to make a special Billy beer. So I, I think that's going to be maybe very interesting to taste how the brewers are yeah, the dealing with it. So uh, I think it's also a one-off. So uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be very interesting to taste the Billy's beer, of course. Yeah. And, and then also, uh, for me, pro professionally-wise, he's talking also with brewers, a lot of brewers that I know already, to have a chat, because some brewers I only see once a year, once a twi or once every two years. So in that way, I find it always very interesting uh, to do that on a festival, certainly like this. So a lot of the breweries that are on the fest are also, we often have here also, uh, in the bar, so uh, that's also like the big family is coming together. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, speaking about beer, you made a pearl for your marriage. Oh yes, we <laughs> did. We uh, early this uh, year we asked uh, Mathieu from uh, La Source uh, mm -hmm. Brewing in Brussels yeah. uh, if he had the time to make our wedding beer. And uh, luckily he said yes, because uh, he had a very busy uh, schedule after the summer, because he uh, was also celebrating their third year uh, anniversary. Uh, but luckily, yes, we can do it. And I asked for a double dry up pale ale with uh, mosaic and uh, swata as hops. And the result is amazing. It's like perfectly what I wanted to um, and like even on the wedding, we had the avant premiere. Uh, everybody was drinking it and was loving it. And now since last week, we have it also here in the bar uh, on draft and in can. And wow, also the reactions are great. And, and it's and one batch only here. Yes, one batch uh, on draft only here. Um, very soon also in other bars around Antwerp and maybe some distributors also. So I'm gonna. Uh, right around um, to uh, deliver uh, the Flairland, so that's the name of the beer, uh, to deliver it to these bars. And how did you discuss uh, with your wife now the, the style of the beer? Was that like a discussion on the no. kitchen table? Like yeah, no, it was totally my decision. Ah. So I am on, on our fifth anniversary of the bar, we made a beer, a sour beer, uh, by Alvine, uh, the Zucuve ah, Cathy, and Cathy is the name of my wife. Ah. And uh, that was like spot on for what she also likes. And also I'm a huge fan of Elvin. And her, one of her favorite yeah. ingredients in beer is uh, elderflower. And so we also okay. put that in and also quince. Uh, that was a suggestion of my ex-colleague uh, Dylan. Uh -huh. And uh, it, the marriage of that was perfectly. And now I wanted to have a beer that's uh, you can easy drink, uh, you can drink more, and if, and this double dry up so pale ale 5.3 ABV, that was a result of it, and that was purely my decision. Because um, normally, Cathy doesn't really like IPAs. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a pale ale, but so very low in the bitterness, yeah. and she actually really liked it. So, uh, Perfect. so it, was, it was not too bad. 
Good choice. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, probably not. Oh. <laughs> the laugh is stronger than the beer. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, yeah, tell us a bit. You, you now live in Ghent, but uh, still are in Antwerp also. How is the Antwerp scene and the Ghent scene? It's totally different. What do you notice there? Um, uh, the scene in Ghent is, is, is certainly a bit uh, smaller than in Antwerp. Of mm. course, also the city, Antwerp, is a bit bigger as Ghent. Uh, but lots of things are, nice things are going on in uh, Ghent, of course, uh, we've got the dog brewing at Bar Wienauer, uh, yeah, got yeah. Uh, some other very nice places. So I think they're slowly going up, it's step by step, and you know, Antwerp has more um, bars um, in that way, but it's, it's just step by step. Uh, also, not everybody in Belgium is ready for craft beer, um, but like mm. uh, Ferry and the other guys were telling, uh, we are not yet on the top. They're still growing, uh, and maybe in, in, in Holland a bit faster than in Belgium, but this because of maybe of all the, the, the Belgian beer tradition. But it's all good. Um, mm. But it's, well, it's certainly not a competition. Um, no, no. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing great, and let it slowly grow with love. Yeah. Uh, final question a bit. Um, yeah, we see the, they are working outside now to get a new terrace, congrats. But what are new things that we can expect uh, next year a bit in beer lovers? Here in the bar, I hope indeed by spring that I will have a total new terrace. Yeah. Uh, so that's pure practical wise and then for the atmosphere. Um, in the bar itself, we gonna also upgrade our snacks, that's the idea. Oh. I've got now the necessary tools to do it, now only the, uh, the, the, the charcuterie itself. Um, so I was playing with this idea already for a long time. Yeah. So I hope one of these weeks we're gonna upgrade that. Uh, and for the rest, beer-wise, I think we're gonna do a bit the same what we are doing uh, with a lot yeah. of uh, thoughts, love and, 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 and care. Uh, about the beer, so uh, service-wise, it's gonna stay the same in that way. So a little fine-tuning, upgrading. Yeah, so yeah, that's the idea, no, indeed. Yes. So keep uh, the winning formula. Yeah? Yes, uh, yes. 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 Yeah. All right, Ahmed. Yeah, we're just filling up some beers. So if you have some beer, just one second, I want to switch. Yep. <laughs> well, we yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much. It's uh, all right. Um, Yep. We're just doing a changeover, folks, and then we're going to tell All you a right. bit more about Billy's Beer Festival and uh, yep. some good stuff to taste there. Ben's already made his uh, some recommendations. Here, by the way, we have a beer cam. We can actually use it. Uh, this is the design on the wedding beer of Kathy and Ben, and it's you can pick up cans. And that's the beer we were drinking before, and you can yeah. pick up cans here exclusively. <laughs> for the people, for the people in Antwerp and who are uh, coming to uh, the beer lovers bar, try it. Really, it's a get nice this, beer. Get this in your glass. This afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Oh my God, all my friends. Or are one of the other uh, draft beers, because you have a lot, right? Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, a lot for yeah. thirsty people. Yes, we try to make it. <laughs> Nice selection of beers here in the bar, but I really enjoy this one. So I just had it from Draft now from Ken. Cheers, my friend. Take care. Yeah, really nice. Awesome. So we have to be real idiots to be drinking before Billy's. Uh, because uh, let me explain the concept of Billy's. <laughs> the reason why I say we have to be real idiots today, and by the way, let me present you wit because you're going to Billy's and drinking now and you're being yep. a real thing, uh, Lifetime Infinity Pass 2. The Beer Edits, making you an official Beer Edits. It's good in any bar oh, wow. or brewery or festival around the world. Oh, wow. Wow. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> I'm a beer idiot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ah, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. This is great, guys. Um, Thanks. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. So, awesome.
grants you access to wherever you like to drink beers, you know. Awesome. Thanks. So, Billy's. Yep. This year, it's held every year. I think this is yep. the 10th year or the... It started in 2013. No, the fifth, 2013. This is fifth, fifth year, right? Is it fifth? 13, 14. Okay, fifth. Think, yeah, we had COVID for a few years. Oh, yes. I think, I think this is the fifth, the fifth edition. Very yep. good. And this year, they have 57 breweries. It's one price you pay. Yep. Uh, for each day, it's I think it's 87 would cost euros around yeah. for Friday 87, and it's basically it gives you that choice, which is very different from all the brewers where it's a token system. Indeed, it's either you go nuts and try and drink everything because it's all you can drink, you know. It's 57 the, breweries. Huh? 57 <laughs> breweries, and the concept is that they each must host. It starts at three o'clock. Uh, within an hour or so, and what it is, the brewers must be present. Yep. It's chosen, you know, and we know Billy's, he's got an amazing taste and knows the beer world so well. Uh, sadly, his dog uh, died, yeah, Stefan Carbo. Yeah, passed away last case, year. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he is, uh, so they must present two beers, and halfway through, because it closes at 10, they switch to two other beers. So potentially, you do the mats two times 57. Times two. Yeah, times two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four. And <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that's uh, some beer. So, you know, our strategy at such a festival, because, of course, you are going to be feeling tipsy after a while because there's so many incredible brewers, and we're going to talk to some of them to wrap up this uh, lovely live session with the Beer Geeks, and I've really yep. enjoyed this talk. Same. We're going to hear some recommendations. Uh, you know, we have, uh, that's the concept, and it's just such, our strategy is to try, usually is to share with friends, you get, because even with the glass, you know, sometimes you just want to taste and see, there are lineups, uh, it's, you suddenly you see lineups at certain places where some uh, cult brewers come, yeah, and then you sure. discover new ones. Yeah, for sure. But from Belgium, I think we have uh, Alvin, we have Atrium, we have, we have uh, fr from Antwerp, the Uncharted. Oh yes, Uncharted with Tom. Uh, Tom. Uh, yep. Yes. Yep. He's amazing. He's he's been he's when we first met him, we showed up at Billy's, and we had been doing a live thing in bars, and he said, "Here come the idiots." <laughs> <laughs> he was the nice. first guy who started that. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> Which was my dream all along. After that, I was ready to just you know pack up and go home. Mm. That was it. I, yeah. My dream had been fulfilled. <laughs> what are some of the breweries that uh, you're looking forward to this year's Billy's? Today and tomorrow? Well, um, like I said, there are 57 breweries. And there are international breweries. Yes. There are renowned breweries. There are breweries which are undiscovered. So it's a whole lineup. And there's a whole bunch to discover. That's what I love about Billy's, is the discovery of new breweries. That's what I do. I try every year to not stand in line for the mm -hmm. the famous breweries but i try to explore um this year it's also an amazing lineup um what i'm really looking forward to is the little earth project yeah. uh so have haven't had anything from them yet and apparently they make great beer so i really want to try that um also looking forward to uh, ipas from uh, police yes. i really enjoy police um Ammonite, 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 Ammonite yeah, yeah, from yeah, France, from, yeah. yeah, I think, right? That's uh, they have amazing beers which I want to try. Oh. Wild creatures from the Czech Republic, or, um, that's that's some amazing stuff right there. Wow, I'm gonna follow you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I always have like a bunch of lists, a bunch of stuff in my head which I really want to try. And when I'm at the festival, it all goes to shit, and I just. <laughs> <laughs> do something completely something else and something completely different because every time i make a list i never end it up it falls apart yeah your friends uh, but introduce yeah but, but that's great that's how it's supposed to be you know if it's all I'm about really lists looking forward to list, the polo because i've tried them uh, i go to the uh lille uh, beer festival every yep. year i just loved it and they were there one year and it was just uh I'd always heard about them, and there's mm -hmm. things, I don't know if you like those kind of what we could call glam beers. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, no. But but that's the great thing about Billy's. Like yeah. you said, it's an all-inclusive festival, which means you buy a ticket, and it's all in. So you can have these small glasses of beer just to try. And that's all about Billy's, is trying, exploring new breweries. Not per se drinking as much as you can, yeah. but trying to find new breweries which 
blow your mind, basically. That's what I love about and Belize. And it's a true beer geeks, to go back yep. to your name, festival, because normally people go, oh, you just go there, you pay, and you get hammered. Yeah. You know, uh, but that's a festival when I go there. We filmed there many times, and we hope to do a bit of live there. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. Yeah, the no. odd thing near the end, maybe, or after it's you not hit about, the stouts. Yeah, but, it's but it's not about not getting about hammered. That. And Billy's is for sure not about getting hammered. Yeah, it's an all-in price, always of course. That but in, yeah. It's an all-in price, of course, but it's about trying different breweries and exploring different breweries, not going for the well-known breweries or the ones that you can drink in your hometown, yes. but trying to find some new gems. Yeah. You know? that, that's it. That's it. what it's about for me. And, and that's what I love about Billy's. You can just explore so many different breweries from so many different countries. That makes it great. And for the people who are going, uh, either today or tomorrow or both, uh, are there any uh, Dutch breweries that you would recommend? Not at this festival, at this year. Oh, they didn't I, have pizza. Yeah, I, I checked the list, but I couldn't find a Dutch brewery in there. Uh, maybe I'm overlooked, and then I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you'll discover <laughs> them. Then that'll be a discovery. Uh, but yeah, stuff. well, I, I'm, I'm, I can safely <laughs> say I know more or less all of the Dutch breweries. <laughs> yeah. But but and every year there are Dutch breweries present. Yeah, like Falking Brew was last yeah. year. Frontaal, we had that. Van Mol. This year I couldn't find any Dutch breweries. So. Maybe you got to talk to Stefan. Indeed, <laughs> Stefan, what happened? Why is there no Dutch craft beer breweries out there? Why is there no Hoog <laughs> yeah. City or Moorsloot or Van der Streek? You know, it's, yeah. uh, but there you go. Maybe they're too busy at all the festivals in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, <laughs> that, is true, that is true. Although Billy's is quite an honor to be yes, as, uh, yeah. as a brewer. So it's yeah. true. And yeah. I'm really looking forward to Billy's. And again, I say much thank to, uh, to Ben for hosting us. In the Great thanks. Beer Lovers Bar. Yeah, That's really the Great awesome. Beer Lovers Bar. It was really wonderful of you, and I think this is a great start to our festival experience. Indeed. I'm really and looking forward to it. It's yeah, coming two days. Here. And yeah. I really enjoy having this talk with you. And uh, Same. So give us, uh, if somebody wanted to join your Facebook group, they just do a search. And yeah, you do a search Beer Geeks uh, or Dutch Beer Geeks or... Uh, Contact me, Ferry Wijnhoven, send me a messenger or DM and I can send you the link. Uh, or just type into Facebook somewhere, Beer Geeks, and you will find us, for sure. And uh, the discussion is mostly in Dutch, but also yeah, in English? Yeah, mostly in Dutch, uh, but no one is uh, hesitant to speak English. Yeah, uh, English that's, that's for sure. We can discuss in English. Uh, Facebook has its translation buttons, which oh, yeah, you can use, true, of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> but we're, we're, we have no problems with uh, talking in English. Uh, yeah. but main, it's mainly Dutch, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And there's no laughing between Belgian Dutch and No, Belgian. no, we're actually <laughs> now No, we're actually getting along quite well. I'm I'm looking at Dieter now. Yeah, right? We're actually getting along quite well, right? The Belgians and the Dutch. That's uh, the same language, close to each other with the people. Exactly. Same language, close uh, borders uh, adjacent. So there's so. none of the poking, pulling the leg. Uh, you no, speak up no, funny. Well, well in, in general, in general, between the Dutch and the, the Flemish, I would say yes. But in the Beagle's Facebook group, no, okay. not at all, actually. No, no. We really enjoy as the Dutch. We really enjoy the the uh, classical Belgian beers, but for sure also the newer craft beers you know like la Sours, which is producing these yeah, awesome it's amazing. Yeah. so really as a dutch we're uh citizens we're really enjoying what belgian is also about now and of course the sour beers and the gerses and the lambics of course which they're amazing well. yeah and there's even a wild beer festival that uh, celebrates that side of the oh we the have world. a wild beer festival in groningen in the netherlands which celebrates all the wild beers from especially from Belgium but also from like wild creatures yeah, from yeah. the Czech Republic they were there and from the states and everywhere so yeah we're, we're really into this uh, Geuze Lambique style kind of beers we're loving it yeah so beer lovers we're just about to sign off and here's Cheers. to you and beer idiots and the beer geeks, beer geeks together again well, let's Cheers, do this sometime perhaps in uh, I would say Arnhem yeah, or somewhere will, else. Yeah. You're festival. very welcome. You're very welcome. That'll be fun. That will host. Thank you. you. And thanks, thanks. everybody. <laughs> Woohoo!